This is Damon Fordham, adjunct professor of history at the Citadel. And I'm here to tell you an interesting story about a very courageous storyteller. You see, during the days immediately after slavery and for a long time afterwards, it was rare for an African-American to speak their mind openly about their experiences to somebody white out of fear, of course, that they would be injured or perhaps lose, lose their jobs or perhaps even killed in some cases. But there was a brave storyteller by the name of William Pinckney in 1917 who was very forthright about his experiences. You see, during this time, there was a, there was a lady by the name of Leonor, Leonardo J. Amar here in Charleston, who wrote a collection called Stories Collected from Slaves. And she interviewed people who had once either worked for her or who were enslaved to their family. And she met this man named, she was met, and so she met up with this man named William Pinckney, who had worked for her family after slavery. And on October the 16th, 1917, William Pinckney told this following story. The slave market was on Chalmers Street, one door from State Street in Charleston, South Carolina. The traders would put the slaves on the table and would tell them their age and would tell their age by their teeth. And she went on to say that um, the slaves would be sold, were locked in the outhouses, bathrooms in other words, which was standing new, which was then standing new. Thackett did the bidding. A coachman would bring $1,700. In January, many slaves would be lost to their owners because their masters were betting on the horses. Often, one or two plantations would be, would be staked. Slaves would be traded to Georgia, Mobile, Alabama, Mississippi, and New Orleans. The biggest trading places were in New Orleans and Atlanta. A slave would often serve three masters. If he ran away, his master would sell him, and so on. Pretty deep. She goes on to say the Sugar House, which was a sort of slave jail, which, uh, of course, no longer exists, was on the corner of Magazine and Logan Streets here in Charleston. Next door would be the Old Roper Hospital, and a grocery store stands on that site right now. If a slave ran away or misbehaved, he would be, he was put there to be sold or punished. One form of punishment was treading the wheel. If the slave fell off the, whip, off the wheel, he broke his leg. The law allowed five paddle strokes and five cowhide switches. Hmm. The slave was made to take all of his clothes and was stretched anywhere. A good many died from the effects of whipping. Stocks were also used as a form of punishment. Sometimes the slaves died in the stocks. Now, this is kind of unusual because back then, when a white person such as Miss Amir would ask a person who had been in slavery what their life was like, they would say that they had good masters or tell pleasant stories. And it usually was not unless they were interviewed by African, other African-Americans would they tell the truth. And even then they would be concerned that this would get back to the wrong white person and they would be punished for doing so. But here it is, October the 17th, 1917, and this Leonardo Amir interviewed this man, uh, William Pinckney, and William Pinckney told her the truth about what he saw and what he experienced in slavery. And there's no record of him being punishment, punished or anything like that. And she actually printed it as written. So that says a lot for a very courageous storyteller named William Pinckney. So if a person in 1917 under those circumstances could tell the truth about their experiences, People today should be able to be free without fear to tell of their experiences and let the chips fall where they may. And so with that story of a courageous storyteller, this is Damon Fordham.